Douglas County school officials announced this week that they will appeal a Colorado Supreme Court decision that overturned its voucher program. Officials hope the United States Supreme Court will rule on the constitutionality of Colorado's Blaine Amendment. Uh, David, as our esteemed lawyer at the table, you know between what the Blaine Amendment means and what chances it might be, since you have actually argued in front of the Supreme Court on a different issue, but you've been there. What are your thoughts? Well, actually, on the, the day I was at the council table of the Supreme Court helping Alan Gurr in the Heller case, uh, another lawyer in the room was this guy, Paul Clement, who was the Solicitor General of the United States, taking a uh, position in between what we favored and what the D.C. favored. And our, my side ended up winning that one, but he, of course, gave a good argument. He's now in private practice. He's representing Douglas County. He is the top constitutional litigator in the country. He doesn't come cheap, but he also doesn't come easily. Uh, because he's at this extremely high level, he has a reputational interest in only, and you can see it in the, what he's, the cases he's taken, he doesn't always take cases that are sure winners, because if they were a sure winner, you wouldn't need to spend all that money on him, but he takes cases where there's a realistic chance of success. And so he knows the court immensely better than any human being in Colorado does. And the fact that, he, that he's taking it, I think, means there is a reasonable possibility that Douglas County could win this, especially on the grounds that our Blaine Amendment, which is don't give money to religious schools in, in our state constitution, as interpreted by the state, the Colorado Supreme Court, was much more extreme in how much it requires government to disfavor even uh, religious schools, even in a neutral sense, like just the ordinary services that, that any business might uh, receive. So I, th I think it's his best chance of success is on challenging the extreme version of the interpretation here uh, rather than all Blaine amendments in other states being stricken down because those have been interpreted more moderately in other states. Eric, as we're, we watch uh, education issues like this uh, like crazy here at this table, uh, as you see this move, uh, what do you think of its chances at the U.S. Supreme Court, well, even at the U.S. Supreme Court taking the case? Don't know. I'm not an attorney and I'm certainly not esteemed. <laughs> uh, but uh, I guess I have two quick thoughts on this. I, I, I wouldn't hazard a bet. In terms of my personal commitment to school choice and maximum amount of choice possible, I believe that applies to Douglas County as to any other place. But in terms of where the epicenter of this fight should be, Douglas County is not the right poster child. I mean, I think you're much more concerned with school choice in urban settings where there are truly miserable schools where kids need and desperately deserve some kind of exit pass or some kind of alternative. To the Blaine Amendment, which dates back, I mean, there are 30 some states around the country that have some version of the Blaine Amendment in their constitution. It, that, that movement started back in the 1870s. And it is rooted in some of the worst bigotry this country has seen. In this, in, in this case, it was anti-Catholic bigotry. And that's what a lot of the opposition to voucher movements, including this recent Colorado Supreme Court decision, was, was rooted in the Blaine Amendment. You can argue in favor of vouchers. You can argue opposed to vouchers. You can have substantive and intellectual uh, discussions on either side of that issue. But for the opposition movement, whether it's teachers union or other, to ground their case in this kind of bigoted background, bigoted history, I think it's shameful, I think it's unbecoming, and I would love it if the U.S. Supreme Court throw the voucher issue back to various states, let various states take their own path, but let's not ground the opposition in some kind of 150-year-old anti-Catholic bigotry. So, what do you think about the chances of uh, Douglas County's appeal to the U.S. Supreme Court? I do think it's reasonable that it will happen, just because I can see the logical argument um, in the interpretation of the Blaine Amendment. Um, I think what confuses me about this situation is if the Blaine Amendment, um, or the, rather the interpretation of it, is held up, if the religious natures of the schools in Douglas County isn't changing, um, I'm not sure what would change with the actual um, decision. If they decide that these are in fact religious schools or religious institutions, I don't think they should be receiving um, state money. And uh, almost to the tune, I believe it's $2.3 million is what that program was trying to do. It was um, about $5,000 for every uh, student, and it was a possible 500 students. Um, so I don't necessarily think that drain is uh, justifiable. Um, and to quickly to the voucher point, I think the issue um, 
with vouchers with this specifically is that when you have something called school choice or you have parent choice, um, ideally it makes a lot of sense, but pragmatically what it is is you're actually removing students uh, from lower performing schools, um, which removes money and funding from those schools. So it doesn't actually do anything for the schools or for the population. Um, all it does is for that individual student or that individual student's parents allow that choice, but that choice isn't bettering um, the school and it's not really bettering the education program in our country in, in general. So from a two-pronged thing, I really don't think uh, Douglas County is doing anything positive. And um, as a last point to that, while the Blaine Amendment is couched heavily in anti-Catholicism, um, I don't think that another ideal behind it, the separation of church and state, is necessarily bigotry. So if we could find a way to work around this um, the, the bigoted Blaine Amendment, but still find a way to address the fact that we do need separation of church and state, and we shouldn't be using um, state funds for institutions and organizations that aren't taxed. Um, I, I would be more in favor of something like that. Natasha, uh, the voucher argument, uh, the education choice argument in Colorado, is not going to go away, uh, mm -hmm. regardless of what happens this particular decision. But what, how do you think this appeal to the Supreme Court will uh, affect it? I think there's a possibility we've spent more time at this table talking about this than the Supreme Court <laughs> will spend talking about this particular topic. That doesn't mean that it's not important, of course. Um, you know, and it, this is something I'm learning as somebody who's cared about education my entire life, who's followed policy, but as a, as a mom with a young son, I've had to look at education policy in a totally different way. And I think situations like this and conversations like this, while they may not always rise to the Supreme Court level, need to be, to be had. I mean, what's the best education system for our children? Where is the best way to spend our funds? What type of schools? How does choice play into it? Those are all conversations that do need to be a part of it, whether the Supreme Court says, yeah, we'll take this on or not.